Hi everyone. Today, Onyx, PMML, and players like H2O are providing standard exchange formats, which make the machine learning models easily portable across libraries, languages, and frameworks, thus making it easy to build your model. But then deploying the model invites the process of setting up a project pipeline and workflow. Generally, the team responsible and capable of setting up this production pipeline is different than a data science team that deployed the models. So percentage of ML models that actually gets deployed in production is very less due to this cross team dependency. So today I'll be demonstrating how CloudRiser helps you in deploying the model files to your chosen cloud platform or running them natively on Ubuntu or Mac. Also providing the UI where you can let your user feed input and get output. There is also an analytics part for each deployed model, which gives you all the details about how your users communicated with your models and that will be seeing shortly. So without further ado, let's jump into the demo. So let's start creating a new project. Click on the new project button on the top right. Give your project a name. So I'll be deploying the famous IS classification model. Give a description. It is optional, but it will be helpful for my users. Click on next. And here you can select your model file format. Uh, so the available options are H2O Mojo models, it can be PMML or Onyx, Onyx is coming soon, so I'll go with PMML for now. Click on next, select your model file and click on finish. So your model file is being uploaded and it is uh, being passed and uh, you can see the fetched input and output attributes. Yeah, so here what you see are the input attributes list and also you can configure your input attributes that gets reflected on your user console so you can provide a user friendly name for your input attributes you can also mark them as important so that they get displayed on top of the list on your user console you can give a description the field type you see here is being fetched from the parser so all fields are basically whole numbers here and you can always change them to whatever field type you want you can also provide the categories if you want your field to be a categorical variable so you can always provide multiple categories over here so for now I'll go with whole and also if it's a number you can always provide the range so let's provide some range and you can save it those you can also configure your output variables the same way that I did for input variables once it is configured it is ready to be deployed so click on deploy and there are multiple cloud provider options here so currently we are supporting AWS and GCP and also you can deploy your model in your local machine using the curl command over here So let's deploy on to AWS. So your model is getting deployed. It will take a few minutes. You can always update your model with the help of this button. So your current model file will be placed with the updated model. Also, if you are making any changes on this page, you can save using the button here. So there is an analytics section uh, for each model. We'll see it shortly after we deploy the model and user communicates with your page. So now you can see a URL has been generated uh, after the model is deployed successfully. So user can access this URL to provide the input to get the predicted output. Let's click on this. UI that is generated after successful deployment of your model you can see input and output attribute section and on the left you can see the input attributes that you marked as important if you want to view all the attributes you can click on view all let's provide the input values and see our predicted output click on submit and here is our predicted output you also have the option to upload a CC file with multiple rows and you get the predicted output for each row that you have in the CSV file you can see the response time in the bottom and also you can provide the feedback for your output. 
if you're satisfied like else dislike so all the user communicated data is stored to provide detailed analytics so once user has interacted with your model providing the input predicting the output or uh, uh, giving the feedback all the data is stored to provide you the detailed analytics so click on analytics and you can see the number of requests on each day the average response time on each day the feedback for each request that will be summed up for each day and also the detailed request details down in the bottom so for each request you can see what are the input fields and output fields also the response time for each request and the feedback so you can click on more details to see what exactly the user has provided and the feedback given also the response time displayed here so thank you hope you enjoyed